She's the icon who changed country music forever and made us all fall in love with head-to-toe leopard print. Mm -hmm. But today, the one and only Shania Twain has left her cowboy hat at the door and joins us live in the, in studio. the studio. We're very excited. Shania. Oh. Shania Twain joins us now. Come on, people. <laughs> Shania Twain, for God's sake. I can't Shania, tell you the buzz. When we get a call from our producer, like normally Wednesday, and you go through the show and he goes, and then, and Johnny said, and then Shania Twain's coming on. You have that moment, you go, hang on, you said, what? <laughs> we are so excited. Honestly, you can see everyone's come. Everyone's absolutely buzzing. Thank you for coming on the show and giving us your time. And for bringing my... Bringing the print. Bringing the print. leopard print. Yeah. You've inspired us all today. We're all in our leopard awesome. print. Sorry. <laughs> um, Shania, when you see those clips, does that feel like a heartbeat like ago? Or does that feel like a long time ago now? I feel like I've lived so many lives already, you know, looking back at all of that stuff. And, oh, yeah, I mean, I could write volumes on probably every experience around every song that I've ever released. Yeah. Um, you know, when you start talking about performances and videos and, and I'm so involved with everything, it's every song has its own, is its own book. Yeah. I yeah, guess, yeah, if yeah. you will. And also, we've got so many fans and there's you know, so much success there that every song means something different to so many people. So when you're singing it live, you know that everyone's going, this was when, you know, I got married. This yeah. is when my relative passed. This was when, you know, like, like your, so, your songs have the ownership with people, you know? I, I, this is what I really love about the live shows because you see the people owning the song mm -hmm. for themselves. So, you know, once I, you know, I, I write the song, of course, it's very personal to me, but... Once I record it and release it, it belongs to everyone else, yeah. and to their stories, and to whatever it is that they associate yeah. um, to their own personal life. It lives. has its own life, doesn't it? It That's leads its own legacy, life. Isn't it? Every song has its own life with whoever you know takes it on, adopts yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, Shania, let's talk about this new single that you've got coming out. Uh, it's called "Waking Up." Dreaming. Tell us a little bit about yeah. it. I love how she's dancing to it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> already. It's very, it's, it's very fun and colourful. And I just, I love to dream. I'm a daydreamer. I, my imagination is always going wild. And, you know, I'm one of these people that, you know, I do believe in following your dreams, but I also believe in dreaming about things that may never come true, that may never be possible. But dream them anyway. I mean, mm -hmm. dreaming is free. Um, What's your daydream at the moment, then? Give us a little insight into your the world of Shania Twain. What do I what daydream you, what about? What are you dreaming at this this moment? Oh, winning the Grand right. National on a horse. <laughs> Actually, you know, people say, you know, what do you do? You, do you love it here? And I thought, I, I, I totally love it here. My dream is to have a little. Some I just want to neighbour the stables um, at Hyde Park. I just want to be a neighbour. <laughs> I don't care. Really? Just, yeah, I want to live right near the stable so I can go to the horses every day and ride in the park. Oh. That's my London dream. I love that dream. Tough. It might not ever come true, but we're going to try I know, and make I it don't, happen. I don't know. I don't know if they even <laughs> have any kind of name. Like, how can you be a neighbour to the stable at Hyde Park? I don't know, but that, that's a dream. Well, let's have a little look at Waking Up Dreaming because it's your brand new single. I'm loving oh. the 80s yes. vibes there. Nice. Love that. Lovely. Everyone's loving that. I mean, your band there, your rock band there, they were rocking totally. it. They're, they're real musicians. I mean, these are like real rock women. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is like a rock 80s um, fun throwback with a contemporary fashion edge to it, which I always love to play with. So, so. you got an album now just sort of waiting in the wings that you sort of... I do. Wow. I've written like four albums over COVID, you know. Are you that, serious? I was very productive in the songwriting department. I got very, very busy writing songs. So, yes, I've written um, an album that hopefully will be out very soon. And we can't wait. So, there'll be more music to follow, Waking Up Dreaming. Yeah, I'm very excited. Um, it's just time to get happy. Yeah. And, and the then, lovely thing you know. for you, Shania, as well, is that, you know, you've got the, the Vegas, comes off the back of the Vegas, Vegas residency, and obviously that, the iconic performance with Harry Styles and Coachella was amazing. Yeah. So you've got this kind of, you know, you've got your legacy fans. You've also got the, probably the sons and daughters of legacy fans as well coming to your gigs now. It's the, fu it's the really fun uh, bridge between the generations. You know, they're, yeah, Harry Styles and Taylor Swift and Jonas Brothers, these are all, well, they're, they're all kids that grew up. Mm -hmm. you know, they all grew up and they were coming to my concerts when they were little kids with their parents, with their moms. 
And now, yeah, now they're adults and um, seeing them eye to eye, you know, these were kids that were, were three, four, five years old coming yeah, to yeah, my concert. Yeah. So and you was inspiring them? Circle. It's unbelievable, I mean, isn't it? You would have known. So it's really lovely. It's, it's really great to be able to share that again with them for the yeah. second time yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in the same life cycle. What was that Vegas residency like? as an experience, what was that like? Obviously you arrived on horses, which was incredible. But what was it, the whole experience like? Well, Las Vegas has the most sophisticated um, production setups. Uh, I mean, look, I can I mean, ride a horse on this. the stage. <laughs> like, who does that? Oh, I love like it. This <laughs> I mean, no saddle, I'm barefoot. And yeah, anything, anything happens. Everything and anything can happen in Vegas. Shut up, the horse. Look at that. Going. See? Yes. <laughs> is that your horse? No. No, no, no. Oh, that's so amazing. I know he bows. <laughs> no, this isn't my horse. Um, it's my friend is the trainer. But yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, I mean, I just love thing. horses, and I wanted horses in the that's show. And magic horse, and then you come yeah. along. What? Yes. Still the one. It's just. It was such. A, I would say Vegas is magical. Magical things can happen there because of the sophistication of the technology and the stages. I mean, we had stalls behind the stage and- You were in that audience incredible. and Shania Chain came out on a horse <laughs> and opened up with Still The One. I'd be like, I'm done. I'm never going to another I'm concert done. ever Might drop again. drop there. This is it. It's really crazy great. So I love doing shows there, you know. Hey, how was that Netflix it. documentary? How did that, how did that oh. come about and how did it go down? Were you happy with it? I'm very happy with it. I really wanted to share, you know, I, my, my career started quite late in, in the sense of the public's knowledge of when yeah. my career started. My first radio hit was at 30 years of age. That's kind of old mm -hmm. to get started as a recording artist. But I had a whole career from starting early on in my childhood. I was doing bars from the age of eight years old. I started writing songs at 10. And so the documentary really takes everybody back and took me back through the beginnings and the whole development of what brought me to my recording contract and then on to success. But there was a whole life and career of music um, before that. Yeah. So. I love the story of your mum waiting for your dad to go to sleep and then sneaking you out to play in bars. That was amazing. I couldn't believe it. It's unbelievable. Well, yes, because we couldn't, we couldn't, um, we didn't have enough gas. Um, for, he wouldn't have had enough gas to get to work the next morning. So it was tight. We were poor. Sure. We, you know, and of course my mother would always hope that I would, somebody would give me 25 bucks or 50 bucks. Sometimes they did and sometimes they didn't, you know, so okay. it was, it was always one of those things. Um, yeah, it was tough. It was tough um, being a childhood singer without any career, really. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't have a platform. I didn't have the Disney group sure. to join. I was not educated in any formal or sophisticated way with music, so I had to learn kind of so on the street. apart from that hard graft, like you said, you were singing since you were you know, eight, eight in Basel. Where, where did that first big break come from? What was the, fir what was the first kind of like the first sort of foot on the, on, the, on the mountain, where did it... Where was it did it's come? got to be coming over. Well, th my first any success was the Woman in Me album, uh, which was Who's Better Be Boots Been Under being the first single yeah. from that. And I was 30. Um, and after that, it just carried on. Sure. But, I mean, all the years up to that was just this constant climb. You were grafting. You were grafting it's, for your career. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And were you assigned? Were you signed as like? Did they want pure country from you, or did they, or did they want the crossover and the pop, or like, you know, were you able to do what you wanted to do? Not at the beginning. Yeah. I had to. Uh, I was a northerner going to the south. I was, uh, I was a woman in very much a man's, more of a man's world in the, the country music industry. I was. Uh, I had nothing, I had no money, I had no parents. My parents had already passed away, so I had nothing to go back to. It was do or die. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to um, be very smart and not balk at whatever opportunities did come sure. along and make the most of them. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what, it didn't take long. It was only the second record that 
um, that you know it took off right, right yeah. away after that. But the first one was a it was a struggle trying to keep my foot in that door. Yeah. But you are a strong, fierce woman. You but are it's incredible. It's good to have that. You'll never lose yeah. that fire in your belly, do you? Yeah. yeah those never. struggle years are the ones that keep you going. It's the struggle years. My whole entire childhood and end adult li yeah. life yeah. up until I got signed in uh -huh. my late twenties, yeah. I was just a struggling artist, um, hoping someday to make it. You know. How is your health and everything? Because I know you lost your voice due yeah. to a, an illness. How is it now? Well, I think the voice, I'm never taking it for granted because I don't know how long this procedure will last. Yeah. So I had a weakness from Lyme's disease um, to the nerves that uh, attach to the vocal cords. Yeah. So I now have two implants, Gore-Tex implants. It's like having crutches. Mm -hmm. And... They support the airflow and keep thing, the airflow symmetrical, the cords moving symmetrically. Um, it may not last forever. You're singing, you got your new album. I'm singing now, I'm taking, the mo you know, taking advantage of it now. I, am, I have a different voice, it's different, but I'm rolling with it. I'm, I've got new kind of cool qualities that I'm embracing and just taking it one day at a time. But yeah, I can sing and I can yell and I can scream and I'm just like, <laughs> celebrating all of that, you know? So, uh, thank you so much. It's a, just such a treat for you joining us. The new single, Waking Up Dreaming, is out thank now. You. Netflix documentary, Not Just a Girl, is streaming on Netflix right now, and she's racing at the 3.30 at Doncaster today. Oh, my goodness. She's uh, 41, <laughs> she's, uh, 41 favourite. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Shania. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.